Hi everyone, in today's video I'm going to share with you a few of my favourite things from the month of February. All in all, I've been really low this month. I have... I think it's just been like the weight of the pandemic and all of that stuff for whatever reason has hit me now. So I've just felt really meh the whole month. Um, and it's been a real like roller coaster of emotions. I've been kind of sad and then I've been kind of just disappointed and um, mopey and sulky <laughs> this past week. I was just angry all week. I was just angry for no, like there were no, there was no specific trigger to the anger. I just realized that suddenly I was very angry and people kept doing things that made it worse. They didn't mean to do things necessarily that made it worse, but they just kept being little things that just made me go, are you fucking kidding me? Are you kidding me? Really? Um, so I bit my tongue a lot this past week. <laughs> Because there were certainly a lot of times where I I was in that headspace where I could have just gone raw. I didn't, but I kind of felt like I could have. So it's just been, it's been a tough month. I'm glad that tomorrow is March. It's a fresh start. We'll be kind of into like springy kind of weather um, and just springy kind of vibes. And that's really what I feel like I need. Like February has not been, has not been the best fun. Anyway, I've got a few things here to share with you that were my favourites for the month. I have kind of the detritus of it all around me, so um, I will just go through it in some sort of sane-ish order. I'm going to start with a lip product because it's the most recent thing to hand. It is what I'm wearing at the moment, and this is the Pat McGrath Lip Fetish Sheer Colour Lip Balm in Blow Up. I love this. I had a mini size of this from a kit that had like the tiniest minis ever in the history of the world in it and I bought a full size when they were doing the lipstick sale after Christmas in kind of early new year I love it this is such a good um it's a nice formula it's not sticky it's not heavy I think it's just a good everyday kind of color for me like it'll be great when we finally get to go back to the office I fully intend on wearing this a lot because it's just a really good color also it has one of those names love a lipstick or a makeup product with a slightly slutty name blow up seems slightly slutty to me so that earns it an extra point as well I really like this I'm wearing it now also uh, face kind of makeup wise and I'm also wearing this now which in hindsight was actually not a great choice for filming um, I should have worn something heavier this is the Charlotte Tilbury light wonder youth boosting perfect skin foundation I don't know why I'm keeping it in the box I seem to be doing that with some stuff lately and I'm not really sure why because it doesn't make a lot of sense it's this guy so it looks a lot like the wonder glow primer uh, and this was the first foundation she launched I think this was available at launch when everything else originally came out so this is a really kind of light light coverage, light consistency, really nice glowy foundation. Uh, it makes my skin look, not right now because on a camera it doesn't look good, in person it looks kind of slightly plumped, kind of dewy, glowy. Uh, it's a really lovely everyday for me and it's the kind of thing that I will kind of wear in rotation alongside the IT Cosmetics CC Cream which is my usual kind of everyday out and about in the world kind of foundation. Normally for filming I would wear something heavier because the lights mean that you need more coverage to not see like, where am I going, like the, all the redness and all of that. But for every day in the real world, this will be a really lovely one. Um, it's a 40ml bottle, it was about £34, has SPF, SPF 15. Um, it's just really nice really nice actually this is of all of the foundations from Charlotte Tilbury this is the one I like the best I have the airbrush flawless which is really heavy and I've also had the magic foundation which I just didn't get along with but for reasons I can't articulate um but yeah this one this is a good one um let's do a skincare product because I have it here this is the beauty pie japan fusion pure transforming cleanser I think I've mentioned this in a favourites before, it continues to be a favourite. So it's like a gel based cleanser that you put on dry skin and then you can either emulsify it with water or do what I do which is I take it off with like a muslin or a, a washcloth. It is, <clears throat> excuse me, it is, uh, it works, it's effective so it takes makeup off, it doesn't strip your skin, your skin feels really kind of soft and smooth and not moisturised but you know what I mean, like not stripped. 
um, when you use it. It's just, it's really, really lovely. If you are a Beauty Pie subscriber, it is inexpensive. It is £7.47 for this bottle, which is 100ml. If you're not a Beauty Pie subscriber and you want to buy it, it is £25. I'd probably pay £25 for this, to be honest. Um, it's a really, really nice cleanser. And I've actually just this month bought a few more products from this Japan Fusion line. So I bought uh, a serum, two serums in fact a moisture lotion toner type dealy and a nighttime moisturiser and I've just been kind of using all of it together and I'm really really liking what it does for my skin. The serum in particular, the uh, M2 serum, which is not here. Is it? Oh it is here! Look at that! It is here. Uh, the deep treatment serum. Also in its box for some weird reason. Don't know why. Uh, so the Japan Fusion deep treatment serum Plumping and NMF boosting with antioxidant vitamin C and grape polyphenols. Liking this as well. Couldn't necessarily say it was a favourite because I haven't used it enough to know. But so far so good with that. Um, but yeah, this. This is like a tried and true. I've gone through multiple tubes of this and I love it. Definitely recommend. Something else I'm really enjoying at the moment is this range from so this is a shampoo and a mask from Kerastase this is the chronologist range so we have the youth revitalizing shampoo and the intense regenerating mask are the two products these are actually meant for kind of aging hair really as much as anything um let me just read the blurb so the blurb on the back of the shampoo says youth revitalising shampoo infused with abacene and hyaluronic acid gently removes impurities from scalp and hair fibre reveals stronger, nourished and more moisturised hair. And then the mask says oh, rinse out treatment, external use so uh, it's a mask and you know how a mask works what I find with this is it you somehow, and I don't know how, there's obviously some psychological effect to it, you feel a difference on your hair as soon as you put it on. Like, as soon as you put it on. You don't need to wait for it to kind of sit. You put it on and it's like your hair immediately feels smoother. I don't know what witchcraft that is, but that's what it, that's what it is, that's what it does. So, these two together are a really lovely combination. As, I mean, they're Kerastase, so they're not cheap anyway, but uh, 27.50 for the shampoo, 43.50 for the mask, which is not inexpensive. Uh, there are obviously hair products out there that cost considerably more than that. Um, they're just more expensive than I would usually buy, but they are really lovely. So that's one downside to it. The other downside for me, which I think would almost certainly be a positive for lots of other people, is that it smells like Flower Bomb by Victor and Rolf, which is a perfume that I do not enjoy. It is my best friend's favorite perfume. It's what she wore on her wedding day, all of that. Um, I don't like it because I am a fruity fragrance girl, not a floral fragrance girl. But it does such good stuff to my hair that I'll deal with it. I, like, I can just, I'll, I'll get over it. I can deal with it. So it's a really lovely range. If you're looking for something a bit fancier with your hair care products, definitely give those a try. You can buy both of those products on places like Feel Unique or Look Fantastic and places like that. I like to buy them from my local salon just because I think, especially at the moment when things are so crazy, I think it's really important to help support local businesses and small businesses as well. So I've been going to the same place now to have my hair done for about 10 years and I know the people there and it just, I am, more comfortable I suppose and I feel better buying product from them. I would like the 20% that you might save on Look Fantastic I would rather they had. Um, I want them to stay in business, I want them to still be there to do my hair because they're great so um, yeah that's like a, that's a me thing um, but I would say like if you can if you're in a position support your local businesses especially at the moment and especially when we come out of lockdown they've they have had such an incredibly tough time um, especially people in the personal care industry when they just haven't been able to do anything during this time. So if you can, where you can, try and try and support, especially the ones that you patron regularly, like the places you go regularly. So for me, these guys, like the hair stuff, for sure. So I've been, I've bought some stuff from them because they're doing like a, you know, order and deliver kind of thing. So yeah, public service announcement over, but just remember to support your local businesses. Okay, so that was that, that was that. 
Let's talk about a TV thing then. So two TV things I've been watching this month. Um, like a good one and a bad one effectively. So I am a RuPaul's Drag Race fan. I've watched all of the seasons that I've been able to watch. For some reason here in the UK they didn't air All Stars 1 to 3. So the first All Stars I ever saw was 4. Because for whatever reason Netflix don't have 1 to 3. So I haven't seen the first 3. But I have seen 4 and 5 and then all of the other seasons. I'm not watching the UK one. I didn't like the Canada series, I watched that and I just, I watched a couple of episodes, couldn't get into it. I tried the UK one and it hasn't wowed me, so I may come back to it later, but at the moment I'm not watching it. But I am watching season 13 of the US one and I'm not enjoying it. I'm really not enjoying it. It is... <sighs> the layout of the season's been all wonky. I think I might have mentioned this in a Get Ready With Me previously. So the, um, they changed the format, that's the word I'm looking for, not layout, format. They changed the format of the show in terms of how it worked. I realise that this is very much to do with COVID and trying to keep everybody safe and I think that's really good. Obviously, you know, don't kill the talent, you know. Um, but the format of the show has just been really weird and I'm finding it really hard to warm to any of the contestants this year. Um, there are a couple of queens I like. I like Rose, I like Denali, but generally... Mm, that it isn't a standout season for me, um, to the point that I've actually gone back. I rewatched. When did I rewatch? Uh, seven. Seven. Rewatched season seven for Katya because I love Katya. Uh, and I re um uh, ten. Rewatched ten for my next change, and I'm just about to start a rewatch of season eleven because Brooklyn Heights is everything. Um. But comparatively, I feel like there's a lot less talent in season 13. And I don't know if that's just because, you know, we've run out. I don't know whether it's the format of the season. I don't know if it's my headspace. But really, generally, it does feel like a much weaker season than previous seasons have been, in my opinion. Um, so I'm not enjoying that so much. As a contrast, something that I have loved this month. I have a subscription to a streaming service called Heyu, H-A-Y-U, uh, which shows all of the shit reality TV. So everything you could possibly imagine in terms of reality TV crap, it's on there. It has all of the Real Housewives shows. So historically, I've always watched um, Beverly Hills, or I've, for the last few years I've watched Beverly Hills. I had watched OC like way back in the day, but Beverly Hills was the one that I've stuck with. Then I found Dallas, and Dallas is so good, so good. Uh, I've watched the first four seasons in the past two months, three seasons of it this month and then one season in, in uh, January. I love it. Dallas is the one. It has the most people that you feel like you can warm to. It has the most, or had, because she's left now, but it had the most spectacular narcissistic pathological liar. It's just a good solid season. Like one of those ones where it doesn't make you angry. I often find with these shows that it makes me angry because it's like, why are you doing that? This one, it made me do the puppy tilt. You know the, huh? Because there was this one character in particular and throughout the, the four seasons that she was on, she fucks people over in the most horrendous ways. Like she spreads rumors about people. She tends to kill people. She's racist. It's awful. It's fully awful. But it's like they keep giving this woman a second chance and I can only think that they were contractually obliged to do so because you you would only, like you would get one chance with me, one chance and then you're gone, goodbye. Um, but this group just kept, it, oh, it was just bizarre but brilliant at the same time so I really enjoyed it. Season five is airing at the moment, but I'm gonna wait until it's, and hey, you get it week to week, but I'm gonna wait until the end of the season and I'll binge it in one go, because it's just more enjoyable for me that way. Like, I don't need a cliffhanger to wait on until next week to see what happens, so I'll just watch it at the end. But if you're looking for trash TV while we're still in this kind of lockdown limbo, recommend highly The Real Housewives of Dallas. Highly recommend. Just, oh, it's good. Okay, um, what else am I going to talk about? I am going to talk about a musical thing. This is something I shared on my Instagram last week, I think. 
um, and I'll leave a link below. I'm a big fan of musical comedians. I I find that really funny. I with music, I'm a person who I hear lyrics more than I hear melody, and so musical comedians are always great for me because it it plays into that part of my brain. I found through a stream, through a, a Twitch gaming stream that I watch, uh, I found a comedian, musical comedian called Jazz Emu. I'm gonna leave him linked below. He's like quirky and weird and really, really funny. Like British funny, but really, really funny. So I'm gonna leave that link below if you wanna take a look and see what my sense of humour is like then please by all means please do um it's only a small channel he's only about five and a half thousand subscribers so he's not a very big channel but I would definitely recommend taking a look for like quirky weirdness because he's quirky and he's weird but he's hilarious so I'm gonna leave that link below and then the last thing I'm going to talk about is snack um this month I have been trying to eat better um I gained a good chunk of weight uh, throughout the first kind of the first eight months of lockdown probably I was fine for maybe the first the first lockdown I was okay like a couple of pounds and then we came out of lockdown sort of and then after that it just all went to shit so I've been trying to tackle that let's say I have a very very sweet tooth that's my kind of downfall in life is I am a sweet tooth person I mean I'm a food person in general but particularly sweet tooth um, and so I was looking for stuff that wasn't fruit, that still felt like a treat that I could have. And that, somehow I stumbled across these. So these are Slimfast Caramel Treats. 95 calories per bar. Um, what have we got? Two and a half grams of fat, 16 grams of carbs, 12 grams of sugar. Um, they're like a extra chewy Mars bar is the best way to describe it. And they're really good. For 95 calories, they're just enough to, um, to kind of, what's the word I'm looking for? Quell is not a word. Quench, also not the word. They just tackle a craving. We'll go with tackle. If you've got like a, kind of like a sweet tooth type craving, they're really, really good for that. Um, I bought them, so a box of five is 3 I think, in most shops and supermarkets I bought five boxes five box oh so it's a box of six not a five box of six it says in giant text I bought five boxes of six on Amazon for 12 pounds I think 12 13 pounds so if it is something I'd recommend trying it like buying one to try and if you like them buy them off Amazon because way cheaper um so yeah enjoying those and then the last thing I am going to talk about is a non-diet non-healthy booze thing but I've really enjoyed this. Um, I don't know what made me buy it, but but I bought it. This is uh, not a branded one in any way. So this is uh, Elderflower Liqueur. This is from Marks and Spencers, which is probably, I probably went in, saw it and went, oh, and then bought it. So it's not um, Saint Germain or Saint Germain, however you like to pronounce it. it that The one I have is just off brand. I have been really enjoying that with tonic water because it's just, it's a little bit sweet and a little bit floral and there's kind of a fruity note to it but it's just a really refreshing drink and it makes a really, really nice change from gin and tonic. Um, like I'm a big and tonic drinker when I drink so I'll drink a gin and tonic, uh, martini and tonic I love and contra and tonic is like, it's my pinnacle right now but I've been having elderflower liqueur and tonic just to change it up a little bit. Um, allegedly this would also mix well with Prosecco which um, I haven't actually done purely because I tend to not open bottles of fizz that often because I'm on my own uh, and it would only be me that drank it and I don't really want to drink a whole bottle of that in one night and it'll be flat by the next day. Um, so I haven't as yet mixed it with anything fizzy but I, but I might, I might try it with a I'm gonna try it with a press like burn a bottle of prosecco and just try it with that. So that is certainly something that if you're as we move into like spring and summer weather as well, if you're looking for something like lighter and more refreshing in terms of a cocktail, I would recommend. And that is everything I'm gonna share with you this month for these favourites. I hope in some way that was interesting. I hope you have had a better February than I did. I suspect that may not be the case because I think everybody's been struggling this month. 
uh, I think it's it's that kind of combination of pandemic and winter and duration and just all of that stuff kind of all converging all at once but nonetheless I hope you're taking care staying safe wearing your mask and washing your hands and I will be back really soon with another video take care